Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by Airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at Airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. This is Ed Cohen in San Diego, California, and you're on Global TV Talk Show. This is a business unit of globalbusinessnews.net. Check it out. Google has measured 1.2 million reader page views since 03. And Global TV Talk Show is... Uh, uh, a phoenix rising from the ashes of our live conference business, which crashed and burned uh, March 1st, 2020. And uh, April 2020 through uh, a couple of days ago, June 6th, according to Google Analytics, Global TV Talk Show has had uh, 105,000 audience page views. And so I thank you all out there. And it's because of great guests like the one we have right here, Louisa Mendoza in New York. Welcome. Thank you so much, Ed. So excited to be here with you and your huge audience. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> it's growing every day. So uh, tell me about uh, your background really quick. Now, let me just tell the audience uh, a little bit. Um, so you're founder and CEO of GTSE, Global Tourism, Sports, and Entertainment. Now, this is all about hospitality management, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. GTSE, Global Tourism, Sports, and Entertainment. Now, this is more than just the, the Brooklyn Nets, right? Correct. That's where it all started, though. <laughs> okay. So now uh, I've what the appetite for our audience let's do a deep dive tell us what that's all about absolutely so my career started in tourism and i started actually in fort lauderdale um, had the opportunity to move to new york and i was working for nyc and company which is the official tourism office here in new york had my dream job, senior director of Spain and Latin America, promoting the greatest city in the world, New York. And all of a sudden I get recruited by the Brooklyn Nets to become their first director of global tourism development. It was the hardest career decision of my life, but as my former CEO at NYC and company said, as much as I wanna keep you, if I actually let you stay, it would be the most selfish thing I do because this is such a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm so, so glad, yes. Yeah, so the once in a lifetime opportunity was to go global. Yes, to go global because at NYC and company, I was director of Spain and Latin America. And now going over to the Brooklyn Nets and working with the NBA, I had an opportunity to build something from scratch. And I had the opportunity to work with the league and I had the opportunity to go global. So yes, absolutely. And so it was a no brainer. And I, but, but that also ties in NYC and company. 
Of course, of course, because we were still working together, going on sales missions together, going on trade shows together, hosting fam trips together. So now it was on a global level um, that we were working together. And so here I am at the Brooklyn Nets. I'm tripling their sales in the first year when it comes to tourism. And the United States Travel Association comes to New York. We meet and they're like, Louisa, this is, I know it's going to sound crazy, but out of all of the leagues and sports teams in the United States, hundreds of them, as we know, NFL, NBA, the whole list goes on. Only five teams had an actual tourism development team. And of those five teams, only one sports team hired someone from the tourism industry. And that's when the Brooklyn Nets hired me. So they asked me to go speak at IPW, which is one of the largest trade shows for tourism in the United States, and talk about the impact of sports and tourism. And so I spoke from the heart the way I always do. And I said to all the teams, I said, listen, guys, I know sports is super competitive and I'm not telling you anything new there, but when it comes to tourism, we are a family. Because when one team is able to attract tourists from other parts of the world, guess what's going to happen? If those tourists have a great time, then when they come to another city, they're going to go want to see another game. So they finally got it. And then I said to them, if you guys have any questions when it comes to sports and tourism, you have a sister in Brooklyn. And so they started reaching out, Luisa, how do you contract with all of the tour operators? What is a receptive tour operator? All the logistics of tourism. And then I'm in London, I'm at WTM, World Travel Market, one of the largest trade shows there. And one of my clients says to me, Luisa, you get it. You get what the tourism needs. I go, I know I've been in the industry for 20 years. And he goes, oh, no wonder. He goes, I need you to get me access to all the teams in the United States. And so of course, it's a no brainer at that point, I'm like, the tourism industry wants access to all of the sports teams and the sports teams want access to the tourism industry. Let's create a company, GTSC, Global Tourism Sports and Entertainment, and bridge the gap. I was like going to be the Brooklyn Bridge. I was going to connect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm connecting both of them. And so the, I shared the news with the Brooklyn Nets and they were so excited and they're like, we want to be your first client. So that was great. And we had amazing contracts ready to go on February, I believe it was 28th. I went on to Univision. I had a great interview and I was featured as the first Hispanic female in the United States to start a global tourism, sports and entertainment company. I mean, and this is going to be a million dollar year in my mind. And boom, March happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, so the last two meetings I was able to produce, live meetings, were uh, February 25, and it was in Times Square, uh, number four Times Square, which was is the NASDAQ building, and uh, we had a sellout crowd. Uh, my host sponsor was the, the accounting firm, tax accounting firm. RSM and they brought clients and I brought in uh, Condé Nast and some other nice names uh, as speakers. And, uh, and then two days later, it was pre-planned, two days later was February 27. And that was my Washington DC meeting featuring NGOs and embassies. It was held on Embassy Row. Uh, the uh, last meeting was February 27, and then on the way back from Washington National to San Diego on the plane, uh, on the whole plane, it was uh, Southwest 737, there was me and maybe five others plus the flight crew, the whole plane was empty. And so we knew something was going to happen. And sure enough, a couple of days later, everything stopped. No more live meetings, no nothing. And so uh, I came back, talked to producer Paul. We had been doing radio shows for 10 years. And I said, what do you know about Zoom? I know nothing. <laughs> and so we decided to say, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> and so here we are a couple of hundred shows later and 105,000 eyeballs. So 
that's pretty good. Amazing, amazing. I love that story. So let's go back to you. Um, you and I first met uh, a long time ago uh, when you were uh, in the executive lodging business uh, in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then uh, you moved on from there and because uh, everybody moved on from there, but um, you were into tourism and all of this is like a, a hospitality thing. Because there's people coming into Manhattan all the time from all over the world. Oh, my God. So many people. And uh, it was like, like, it's so big. How do you get a job in that? And what do you do? So tell us about that first step. Of how I got into the NYC and company in the tourism industry. So right. I actually, before I came to New York, I was in the tourism industry in Florida. I actually got my degree in travel and tourism management from FIU. I actually go back into high school because when my when I was in high school, I was in a program under the National, National Academy Foundation that was started by Sandy Wiles when he was here, um, chairman of Citigroup, he, he started this uh, company, this organization. And so since I was 17, I've been in the travel and tourism industry. My first internship was at the Broward County Convention Center in Fort Lauderdale. I had a chance to work with the tourism office in Fort Lauderdale, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. And then when I moved to New York, I actually worked um, for Marriott International. So my whole career had always been in tourism in some way, shape or form. And then I actually had the opportunity to go work in the corporate housing industry. And that's where you and I had the opportunity to meet. Yes. And so while it was an amazing experience, I knew tourism was something that I loved and I wanted to get back. And I actually share with you, I was on a train going to a wedding in Boston and I was on LinkedIn and I saw this posting that said director of Latin America and Spain for NYC and company. And I'm looking at the job description and it says, and I'm reading it and I'm like, oh my God, this is made for me. And I just, I remember like looking at it and saying, this is for me. And so I applied for the position and um, I had the opportunity. And, and so that was really how I got into um, NYC and company and how I had the opportunity to go back into this role. And so it, it's um, tourism is something that once you're in this industry, it, it, you may do some left turns and right turns, but some way it pulls you back. <laughs> and so bringing it all together, hospitality is what it is, which means making people feel comfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. That's uh, and and really, you know, I think uh, the viewers may want to know. Well, what happened, right? Like you're here, you're March, you're 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 having a company called GTSE, Global Tourism Sports and Entertainment. I'm in New York. I'm in a restaurant. I remember the restaurant owner talking to my 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 partner and I, and and um, he says, "So I know this is not looking good for New York. There's been no one in the restaurant today. You're the second person that we've waited on all day." And then he turned over to me and he said, what about you? Do you think you're going to be okay? And I said, here's my business card. And he reads it. He goes, global tourism, sports and entertainment. He goes, yep, you're, this is not going to be good for you either. And so really last year, I think uh, Steve Jobs says it best. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Nice. And looking backwards today, I realized that what COVID did for us, well, you know, Tony Robbins said a very magical line in my life yesterday, last year, and he said, COVID-19 did not happen to us, it happened for us. And for me, that was so powerful, because I said, what is going to be the outcome of this opportunity. There has to be something here. And so quickly, what I started doing was I started really focusing on four individuals, Oprah Winfrey, Tony Robbins, Mark Cuban, and Elon Musk. And I said to myself, I said, what do these four people have in common? And yes, they're very wealthy. However, these are people that have a diversified portfolio and they have expanded and they don't put all their eggs in one basket. 
And at the point at that time, last March, we didn't know when sports and tourism or entertainment were going to come back. So I quickly hired a business coach. I hired a former NFL player who lost everything, went from millionaire to janitor and worked his way back up today. And I hired him to help me. What was I going to do next in my career? And so long story short is we expanded our portfolio and started a digital marketing agency called Uconic, U-K-O-N-I-K, where our goal is to make you iconic, Uconic. And so our purpose is to help brands um, become iconic while helping leaders leave a legacy behind. And now what I'm seeing is the integration of both because sports and tourism, obviously digital marketing is so important. And so, yes, thank you for pulling that up. We make you, it will make you iconic. And so that is where we are um, with this amazing opportunity because digital market, our, our world has changed forever. I mean, yes, people will travel again. Yes, people will go to sports again. However, digital marketing is something that's here to stay. And right now, companies need to understand that in order to have a presence globally, you have to have a strong website. Otherwise, you're not going to have that exposure that you need. And so for me, it was like, how can I help others? How can I give a service that's going to help others? And so through um, Uconic, we want to help with digital marketing, growth strategies, website development, public relationships, and executive coaching. And um, we, our team is super amazing. I mean, we have a team that has worked, as you can see, with some of the biggest brands, um, whether it's Marriott and Nissan and so forth. So we, we have a team that is so bright and have so much expertise. And that's what I said. I have to bring a people of experts that can help so many startups because last year was the year of startups, right? How many people lost their jobs and reinvented themselves and had to start new companies. And we wanted to provide the best service with rates that were affordable, especially for startups. And so that is what we've been able to really focus on. And our PR team is absolutely amazing. And these are some of the uh, publications that we have been able to feature our clients on, whether it's Forbes or the Wall Street Journal, um, you have the whole list there. So I won't read it out loud, but um, that is how we pivoted. And I know pivoted is probably a word that has been overused and overrated, but I really feel that this right here is an example of how we pivoted to survive 2020 and then 2021, this is the year. And as Pitbull says, 2020, but one with W-O-N, because we are going to win this year, right? So oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, so, so let me uh, back up a little bit with you, okay? Um, and, and just talk about no one has a budget. How do you get paid? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I wish I was a nonprofit and I had tons of sponsors paying us so that we could provide these services complimentary, but obviously I have a team I have to pay and everybody needs to get paid. What I realize is that there are a lot of companies out there that charge ridiculous rates, ridiculous rates. So, I mean, there are companies that are charging you 60, $70,000 for a website plus, and that's where we come in and we can help a company half of that price, still the same value. And what we do is we are able to help startups that don't have those, ex those big budgets um, be able to find something that's more affordable. And as they say, it takes money to make money, right? Like there are certain things that you have to invest in. Um, and so, I mean, we have to invest in our own website. We had to create, you know, find the opportunity to, to really have a website that was going to say, Hey, I love the graphics. When you come in, I want you to be inspired. And I want you to say, this is a company that I would love for them to build our website. And so, there are some cuts that you can make in life, but there's some that you're just going to have to, you know, find the money to make it happen because it takes money to make money that I learned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now let's go back to uh, the Brooklyn Nets. 
uh, just as an example. Uh, and so there's the World Trade Center. It's a beautiful picture. So um, what are you doing back with them? So and what we're doing now is that we are working with the tourism industry from all around the world. So like just last night, to give you an example, because I love storytelling, I think it's the best way to describe. We have a client in London that um, needs tickets for the playoffs. So we are the middleman between the sports teams and the tourism industry. And so we are working, whether it's with the Brooklyn Nets, with the New York Knicks, with the Yankees, with the San Francisco Giants, any team that any tourism um that any tourism supplier needs tickets for, we are working as the middleman to help them um, find uh, the tickets for the games that they are going to. Because what happens, Ed, is if it's confusing for us here in the United States, do I go to Ticketmaster? Do I go to StubHub? Like there's thousands of options. Imagine what somebody internationally, when they look for tickets, they have a million and one options. And unfortunately, what happens many times is that these tickets are not legitimate because there's some phony companies out there that are providing the best rates. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And that's where so many industry uh, tourism companies have been burnt where they buy these very discounted tickets. The client shows up and they're like, sorry, those are not real tickets. And so our company is to create the gap is, is to bridge the gap and to give the tourism industry the peace of mind that the tickets that we are getting for them are coming directly from the teams, the leagues themselves. And so that they don't have to worry about are these legitimate tickets. So that's how we're working with the Brooklyn Nets and all of the teams across the United States. So let's talk about hotels and hospitality management. Okay. Uh, like uh, in yesterday's press, uh, Hilton, uh, Hilton worldwide was, was quoted as saying, uh, over the prior weekend, they had the highest occupancy in a year and a half, brand wide, you know, and and we're back. They said, okay, uh, that's a great story, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I'm telling you, it feels. We could feel it in New York. We feel. I mean, you go into the city; it's people are traveling right now. One of the biggest travel trends that is happening is. We live in this amazing country called the United States. And I say that because we have been so generous with vaccinating tourists. And some cities have been very expressive that they're open and that they are vaccinating. Others are still not 100% have come out and said it's official. But when people go to those cities, they are being vaccinated. And so what you're having now is a huge influx of people, especially from Latin America, that cannot get their hands on a vaccine. That second problem is that there's so many vaccines that are not legitimate vaccines. They're, they're, they're knockoffs. And so people are coming to the United States. They're like, I'm going to get my vaccine and I'm making a trip out of it. And so this is what has helped bring tourism back is that we are vaccinating tourists and we are giving people an opportunity to be in this great country, enjoying our beautiful country and also getting the vaccines. And that has spiked up the tourism numbers in ways you cannot even imagine because we are not requesting the tourism vaccinations for people to come into the United States like they are in, in Europe right now. So we, somebody from Latin America cannot go to Europe right now to get their vaccines because you have to show proof. However, you can't come to the United States to get your vaccines. And that has helped our tourism just have a spike in ways you can't even imagine. Isn't that fascinating? Wow. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a timely announcement. Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career experts. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Delzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study 
on the future of expatriation. And we'd value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10 minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. So uh, Broadway is opening up. Huh? I was reading that Springsteen's going to do a, a couple of months of uh, concerts yes. inside inside one of the old theaters. Yes, and it, I mean, just yesterday there was an announcement that there is going to be a huge concert that is go. It's going to be a week of concerts on um, in Central Park. So what better way to to open up the city than by actually being able to to see and I'm trying to pull it up so I can so here so here we go it says um, Clive Davis to produce New York mega concert for the city's reopening what better way to open up New York City than with a concert and uh, um, de Blasio said the mega concert part of the Blasio's proposed homecoming week so we're having a homecoming week in New York and tentatively scheduled for August 21st will take place in Central Park's Green Lawn their 13 acre expanse near the Metropolitan Museum of Art Davis stated that he hopes to book eight iconic stars for the three hour show which will play 60,000, which will play to 60,000 attendees as well as a worldwide television audience. So, you know, when New York goes big, they go really big. <laughs> so, so that means that, uh, um, uh, thank you, producer Paul, for doing that. So that means that uh, people won't be afraid of gathering. 
No, I mean, what, what's happening right now? I mean, the vaccination rates right now in New York, and I don't have those stats in front of me, but, you know, um, New York, I think one of, was one of the cities that really uh, jumped forward and, and most people are vaccinated now. Um, and, and just for example, if you want to go to one of the big stadiums, arenas, you have to show proof of vaccination. So with the playoffs and having the Knicks and the Nets in the playoffs, guess what? <laughs> People are getting those vaccinations because they don't want to miss out on it. Um so that's where we're, you know, um, seeing that so many people have been vaccinated. And you know what? One thing I will say also about New York, there's still a lot of people walking around with masks, in, especially indoors, although they're now optional. So that's been really interesting to see how people are um, not only getting vaccinated, but they're still walking around with masks. So I guess so the people they, are afraid, you know, and, and but they trust, but they can't verify. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go further now into uh, what what you uh, would would like to do. Like for instance, my my little company here um, has a, a long way to go to match what you're doing. Um, certainly, we've been blessed with audience growth. But um, what what I'm trying to do as the broadcaster is to find people from around the world not just in the U.S., to come on to the broadcast and tell their story for 15 minutes or so uh, at no charge whatsoever. Uh, so I'm doing that to build up an audience, uh, and that will attract advertisers, hopefully, because they want their brand associated with something nice, all right? And that's, a, that's like a happy. Um, and so... Um, our unofficial theme song. Remember the old Coca-Cola, you know, commercial from a hundred years ago. We'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony, and then buy a Coke. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. So, 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 producer Paul found that old recording uh, <laughs> from I don't know where, but dusted it off. Uh, so we've been showing it a couple of times, and it's just like a warm fuzzy. And you know, we're thinking of that kind of branding, and you're into iconic. Uh, you conic, uh, me conic, me conic. <laughs> that should be a new brand for you, me. Me conic. <laughs> oh, it froze. <laughs> but, you know, how does all this relate to individuals? Absolutely. And, and it all starts with the individual. You know, at the end of the day, when when you look what our, um, our purpose and our mission and our drive is, it all boils down to one word, people. And it's about the relationships because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's a good one. And, uh, for us, it's, um, if you ask me what's been my recipe for success, it's been the relationships that I have built. I was literally in tears last night here in, in, in my office because to see people calling me from all different parts of the world already saying, hey, Louisa, things are reawakening, things are coming back. We would love to work with you again. We're opening up after a year of a pandemic when people can remember you and the first person they think of when, when they want sports. I was just I, it was tears of gratitude and tears of joy. And so that is what we're all about, right? Um, for me, it's, uh, it's all about the human touch and about helping um, people that have a vision to want to empower and to want to bring change upon the world. And so I love what you're doing, Ed, because I believe that you're creating a platform to give people like myself uh, the, the moment to come on and to speak about their brands or their companies or their journey and what led them to where they are today. And so if I can help you or if I can help any of your listeners that maybe they've had to do a pivot in their lives and they're starting a new career and they're starting a new business and they're like, man, it's a lot. It is. 
I was there. That's why I said, let's start a digital marketing agency because it consumes the life out of you. And let's leave that to the experts so you can focus on the things that you want to do and you need to do, which is sales. You shouldn't be focusing on your website when you really should be focusing on, on sales because sales is what drives a company. So if I could ever be of any resource to you or to any of your amazing viewers that are tuning in, um, please, we're here Thank you. for you. Thank you. So let's talk about pivot because that's a basketball term. And so um, pivot means that, okay, like your uh, Will Chamberlain, you know, or Bill Russell or Phil Jackson from the old Knicks days or, or whoever there is now, LeBron James. Um, and you know a lot more than me, but um, you know, there's these big guys who getting millions a year and all of a sudden they're in midcourt and is surrounded by guys waving their hands and not fouling them yet, but uh, yeah. maybe. Uh, and so what do they do? They turn, that's called a pivot, right? And they face another direction. They create a change mechanism. And then because they created that change mechanism as a result of stepping around, in other words, rather than go through the wall, go around it <laughs> and, and find a new way. Uh, pivot means finding a new way in the face of trouble, right? I love that. Yeah, that's absolutely it, Ed. It's okay to use it. Go right ahead. <laughs> it, it, it fits. It's a good, it's a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, life is... Uh, as Forrest Gump said, uh, <laughs> like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. So for many people, including me and you, it's not all peaks, there's some valleys. And not just a crash and burn of the business, but personal, like depression or, or getting into a squabble with a customer or somebody else that turns awful uh, or a bad divorce, <laughs> or, or whatever, or breakup. Um, and it impacts everything around what well, did to me. And then uh, it caused sort of a tailspin. And then, I don't know, one day something happened or someone said something to me, I don't know, uh, probably all of the above. Or I found faith that enabled me to take another step over there, not over there. So you've had that experience too. Yes, I've, I've had that experience. And um, most recently, it's been two huge awakenings. And what I can say is that we can turn our mess into our message. And yes, last year, as if it wasn't enough, my, my business coming to a complete halt, I actually got COVID. And I was extremely sick. I remember I was in my bed. I woke up one day around three o'clock in the morning. I couldn't even raise my hands because I had no energy inside of me. I was coughing up blood clots and I thought for a moment, is this it? Is that how I leave this world? And I wasn't ready to go. And I prayed with all my faith because as a single mom, I not only look after my mom and my dad, but I of course look after my little girl. And uh, I say I have three children because my goal was to retire my parents and take care of them. And so I am my parents keeper. And so I was not ready to leave. And so what that whole experience taught me of being so sick is that the moment I started to recover, Ed, every time, every morning that I wake up and I can open my eyes and my feet can touch the ground, it's a good day. Every day above ground, it's a good day. And I say that because that gave me the peace to surrender and to say, whatever's meant to be will happen. I just need to know that I'm alive and that I am well, I'm healthy. And if I'm healthy and alive, I'll be able to conquer everything. And so that's how I was able to come back from that. And then this year, um, Things are going amazing. However, we've had one huge 
I don't even know what to call it, but at the same time, it's been the biggest lesson learned. And that is um, my mother, we found she had colon cancer and um, she had her surgery. She recovered. Then they said that they had to do a biopsy on her chest because they found some lymph nodes that looked a little weird. So they lit up in the CAT scan and that came out negative, thank God. And then we have one more thing, which is her thyroid. And that has to go in for a biopsy. And yet in the midst of this entire thing, she has kept joy and peace. And she has just said, I let go and I let God and whatever's going to happen will be. And so for me, a person that likes everything to be organized and I want everything to go a certain way and, and I try to plan and everything, there are times where I say, hey, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, has a, a plan and a purpose. And so I really feel that throughout life, when life throws us lemons, we can make lemonade. And I believe that the bigger the test, the bigger the testimony. So, um, you know, I, that's, that's my, that's my word and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so remember the old song, uh, I think Doris Day sang it in some old movie, uh, K Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. But yeah. I've, I want to add something to, um, um, what you just said about lemons turning to lemonade. Uh, let's make lemoncello. It'll be far more effective. I love that. I love that. <laughs> lemoncello. Oh my God. You add to the next level. <laughs> please, please come back on global TV talk show. We, we need you. <laughs> Of course, I'm here for you and your audience. And uh, it's so great to see you. And I just congratulate you because you are another prime example of what pivoting. I mean, you waited a month, which is nothing. And here you were already like, so you are an inspiration. But, but, but I was afraid to be on camera because, you know, I thought, wow, what, what do I do? So um, and so we started playing with it during that month. Uh, almost right away in March, but I said, oh, no, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What do, how do I do this? How do I set it up? Uh, and then it dawned on me, uh, very quickly here, dawned on me, I've got all these customers uh, who are subscribers to my site and newsletter and things like that uh, from all over the world. And so I just started sending messages i say well i'm starting this thing you want to be interviewed it doesn't cost you anything we're trying to build up so do it <laughs> many did <laughs> and now all of a sudden we're we're busy and uh we're find, finding some advertisers uh, wow. like prime prime stone housing solutions is one of them um and uh so Anyway, onward from here. Thank you, Louisa Mendoza. You're a gift. And uh, you conic, U K O N I C, right? K, two Ks. U K O N I K dot com. You conic. <laughs> you got it. Okay, there we go. Lu Louisa Mendoza, thank you for being on Global TV. Please come back. My pleasure. Thank uh, you so much. Blessings to all. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.